Shalom Chavrim. It is a pleasure to speak with you guys again. And um, there's a lot of a lot of things going on right now in the world regarding uh, this new group in Iraq called ISIS or ISIL is another name they're called by it as a Sunni group. Uh, and um, but anyway, uh, I thought I would take and come to you a little bit about this. I caught a little bit of a video that Brother Paul Begley had put out about it. And Brother Paul Begley was actually quoting a scripture from Jeremiah. And the scripture kind of caught my attention. Now, uh, I'm not... I, let me just say this. I didn't really listen to Brother Paul Begley's whole video on this. I don't know Brother Paul's stand on it. Uh, so if I take a little different stance on this, it's nothing against my brother Paul. I, I love him and I appreciate his, his comments and enjoy um, especially getting some of the news from him because he has uh, he's always seems to be right on top of things that are happening. Uh, a lot like Brother Aaron, uh, who is, does our news briefs on our website. Uh, brother Aaron twice a day is actually keeping the news posted there. And I thank God for that. So if you haven't been to the website, IsraelReturns.com, I um, think you would enjoy that. By the way, let me remind you again about the newsletter that we have that goes out. If you would like to be a part of that, uh, just register at IsraelReturns.com. There's a little link in there that says Newsletter. And be sure to confirm it. It'll send you an email asking you to confirm that. So be sure to confirm that back uh, so that you can receive the newsletter. It basically lets you know what's going on. Um, right now it goes out a couple of times a month. Eventually it'll be weekly. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we said that we were going to do and slowly but surely we're getting those things done. Uh, we started our Shabbat uh, services that are on Saturdays at 11 a.m. I think also on our website you'll find the link to that where you can be a part of that. And uh, I think the best way to do it, you have to follow us on live stream. It is a live broadcast. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people join up with that. The service went really well. We did post it on YouTube as well. Uh, but if you want to be able to join in live, that's for those people that are that have been longing for a Sabbath service, uh, that they're able to be a part of that. We're going to be speaking, though, this particular, uh, this Saturday, this Shabbat service. I'm going to take you into... Um, the very the purpose of the law that God gave for Shabbat. Uh, and I'm going to let you know why Sunday is definitely not the way that God did it. I'll show you historically how the apostles always kept the Sabbath. Uh, so we're going to go into that. We're going to show you where uh, how Sunday got brought into there, uh, why a lot of churches do that. And I'm not here to condemn those churches, but just to show you the way God started it, the way He intended it. Uh, how it foreshadows and types the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those type things there. So I hope you en and join us on that. Anyway, I want to get into this uh, issue about ISIS. This is a militant group. It is a Sun uh, mostly Sunnis uh, that are just rapidly going across Iraq. Um, they're about 15,000 strong as of right now. They're very well equipped, very well organized. Uh, and they are causing havoc throughout the country. Now, they are within about 100 kilometers of Baghdad. There's many of them say they're going to try to take Baghdad, uh, which will be very difficult for them to do. If they do it, I'll be surprised because Baghdad is a Shiite, mostly Shiite uh, area there. In fact, the Sunnis were disarmed um, by the United States military when they were there and the Shiites were armed. Uh, so it makes it a little bit harder for them to take that area, and there's over two million Shiites, I think two and a half million Shiites that live in Baghdad. So not really sure what's gonna go on there. Uh, I, I personally think, though, that what you're looking at is, because there's a lot of people thinking, well, they're, they're headed to the ancient city of Babylon. Oh my gosh, the, the, the Mahdi, the Antichrist is coming, and, and okay, come on, guys. Let's don't get our mind off on something that's not right. You have to remember, especially back when, say for example, when uh, in Iraq, uh, the Shiite uh, majority country there, uh, not Iraq, but Iran, when um, uh, Ahmadinejad was in power, everybody thought Ahmadinejad was gonna be the Antichrist. 
well, he's going to take and he's going to conquer the world and they're going to bring in Islam uh, and this, he'll be the Antichrist. And he came to nothing. Uh, you know, we're, we're constantly seeing things like this. And it seems like things happen to get our, our attention drawn off of what's really going on. And, and I'm seeing this over and over and over. And then people just feed on that. And they think, well, gosh, this has got to be it right here. We forget every time that the Vatican created the Muslim religion. In fact, the Sunnis are the, um, are the ones that are loyal to the Vatican. So it's kind of interesting that the Sunnis are doing this. The Shiites hate the Vatican. Um, but anyway, it is the Muslim people were created by Islam to destroy the true believing Jewish believers back uh, right after uh, when the Vatican was gaining uh, popularity back in the mid 500s or the fifth century we might call it and the true Christian uh, believers who were the Jewish believers they were also gaining momentum in the northern part of Africa there and throughout the Middle East and so the Vatican at that time they had to do something to put a stop to them so they joined forces with them with the Arabic people by creating the religion uh, the Muslim religion that was founded by Muhammad which uh, Muhammad was he married uh, Kaji a, uh, a, a an Arab girl that had converted to to uh, Catholicism uh, who was a loyal Catholic basically a nun her sister as well and she married Muhammad and this is where that religion was created this is why you see even the Muslim people, they use like a rosary in their prayers, like the Catholics do. The women amongst the Arab uh, people dress like a nun does. Um, they believe that Jesus uh, is a prophet. Well, why not? You know, if the Vatican is going to create the religion, they don't want to bash Jesus. And they also believe that Mary is a saint. So uh, it's kind of ironic that all these similarities are laying in there. They both... Uh, they both have the sun god and the moon god in their services. Uh, the Catholic Church, they put the, the, the wafer on top of this, uh, like this horns that are laying there, and they put that on there in their worship service, or what they call a mass. And the Muslims have the same thing on top of their, every one of their uh, little, little, what would you call it, uh, mosque. They've got the crescent moon and the, and the star in there, uh, showing their sun god and moon god anyway uh, I, I don't want to get into all that there but the the purpose i wanted to share with you though as uh brother uh brother paul had mentioned a scripture and i thought the scripture was actually very interesting so god bless you brother paul i, I want to share with you though and, and like i said i didn't listen to brother paul's message so i don't know what he was inferring to when he mentioned this scripture but i'm going to share with you what uh, the passage actually refers to, because it's very interesting here. Uh, and we get into chapter 50 of Jeremiah. Um, and maybe Brother Paul is in a different chapter. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, verse 41. I think, I think he was here, though. In verse 41, it says, Behold, people shall come from the north, a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the furthest parts of the earth. They shall hold the bow and javelin. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one lined up like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babel, or Babylon, daughter of Babylon here. It's interesting that it says daughter of Babel, or daughter of Babylon. I need to use English names for you guys. I'll, I'll say Babylon for you. And the reason I say that is because in Micah chapter 4, when it's speaking of Israel, it calls it the daughter of, uh, of Zion. See, and why? The daughter. It's not back in the times when Israel was first a nation, but the daughter represents that future generation. Same thing with Babylon here. It's not in the early days of Babylon when Babylon was a nation, but it's a future generation here of Babylon. And this is why we see this here. So it says, the king of, of Babylon has heard the report of them, and his hands have grown feeble. Now, keep in mind, this king is coming from the north. Now, Isis cannot, this little group called Isis or, or Isil, either way you want to call the name of this group here of Sunnis, 
It can't be this group here. You know, I mean, granted, when you look at Iraq, it is maybe we would say the uh, the northwest part of the country as they're coming down. Uh, but this is literally speaking of the Russian provinces and even uh, of Iran when they come against the Vatican. Uh, because the Vatican is modern day Babylon. And I'm going to share with you how we can know this. But let's just look at a couple of things here just so you'll see that this is literally speaking of the Vatican as well as um, uh, nothing to do with the Iraqis whatsoever in this. Because you have to remember Italy, the ancient, the, the, the Babylonian kingdom, Rome, and, and, uh, and the Roman Empire, it stretched all the way to the eastern, uh, eastern borders as well. Iraq, all of these areas were included in it. I know Chuck Missler mentions that there's an eastern and a western leg of, of the, of the uh, Babylonian Empire. Uh, but Rome was the one that came down and took Israel and destroyed it. And the scripture clearly says the prince that shall come will be of the one that destroyed the temple and the sanctuary, which was Titus, the Roman general. So anyhow, let's just go back to this here. Uh, it says here, the king of Babylon has heard the report of them and his hands have grown feeble and anguish has taken hold of him and pains of a woman in travail. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the wild country of the Jordan against a strong sheepfold. Now, interesting that it mentions sheepfold. It's supposed to be like a Christian. It's supposed to be believers. For in a moment I will make them run over her, and whoever is chosen, I will appoint him over her. For who is like me? Who will set me a time? Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Babylon. Now, I haven't quite figured out the word placement here. But it almost seems to suggest when, when God says here, For who is like me? Who will set me a time? Now, the, you have to remember, Satan said he'd be like the Most High and dwell in the temple of the Most High. And so if Satan is sitting there saying that he's going to be like the Most High, and then God asks the question, who is like me? And the Pope is the vicar of what is said by them. They are the vicar or the replacement or the similitude of Jesus on earth. So God asks him that question, who is like me? And who will I appoint him over her? For who is like me? And who will set me a time? Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? See, did not, did not Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, call him the shepherd of our common heritage? Think about that. When he brought him the menorah as a gift, he called them the shepherd. He called Pope Francis the shepherd of our common heritage. And God says here, and who is that shepherd that will stand before me? He's not going to stand before God and get away with this. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, or Hashem, that he has taken against Babylon and his purpose that has purposed against the land of Kasdim. Surely the least of the flock shall drag them away. Surely the fold shall be, shall be appalled at them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. Now, this is where I want to really help you to understand what's being said here. Let's look at this in the, in the Hebraic language here. Babel, uh, Nirash, uh, Excuse me, Nira Sha Haaretz Uza Zaka Kaha Begoim Nishma. All right, now what's important here are two words because you're looking at the word here. Babylon, see, it's taken of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. So the question is, is what is he saying here by these two words, this word moved? It almost sounds like the earth, there's an earthquake by it and the people are, are weeping over it. But that's not what it is. That's not what's happening here. Uh, it says, Babel, Nila Shah. 
See, what is Nirasha? It's in an upheaval. It's, Babylon is, is in an upheaval, excuse me, in, a, in an upheaval. And Haaretz, the earth, Azakacha. This is, it's, it's, it's an outcry. It is um, because of what's happening to, the, to, to this particular place, the whole earth is, is torn apart. They're, they're, they're crying out, what are you doing? What's happening? What's going on? Babylon is being, is being moved, see? It's, being, it's, it's in an upheaval. Some, it's, a terrible thing is taking place right there. And the people are crying out, why is this happening? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. I'm going to share with you in the book of Revelation the exact same sequence of events for you to think about there as well. All right? So that's what he actually says. So if we say it in English, Babylon, the earth is in an upheaval. See? And by the way, the earth, because he says right here, Babel, Nirashaah Haaretz. In other words, it's not just, a, uh, and maybe I didn't explain that quite clearly there. It's not that the, the Babylon is an upheaval. The whole earth, everybody on the earth, they're, they're, they're freaking out over this. And their voices are crying out against it of what's happening to Babylon. Do you think the earth cares anything about what happens in Iraq? Do you think if ISIS takes over Babylon, you think the earth is going to care? Other than the United States wanting the oil or Russia wanting the oil that's down there, they don't care. That's the, the only reason the United States went in there was because of the oil. You know, they got to guarantee, you know, Bush had to guarantee that Americans would keep their oil prices lowered. And when they went and invaded Kuwait, really this was over the Kuwaiti thing because Kuwait produces a lot of oil and southern Iraq produces a lot of oil. So America had to go in there and stabilize that situation because Kuwait was a major partner for the United States and they didn't want to up, inter interrupt that oil supply. And so while they were there, they decided to go ahead and take Iraq as well and stabilize that oil supply for the United States as well. Okay, that's what happened there. And if the Sunnis come in there and, and take and kill everybody off, you know, they're not really worried about it. In fact, the Vatican would like a lot of the Shiites killed. That's the way the Vatican has always worked. The Vatican causes upheavals like they did in Egypt, like they're doing in Syria, like now they're doing in Iraq. Why? There's still too many Shiites. So I expect a major bloodbath out of this. Sure. It's to kill off that Shiite population that goes against the Vatican. So that's what the Iranians are. They're Shiites. Vatican hates them, and they hate the Vatican. But the Sunnis, a little different group altogether. Now they call this the radical ones. Well, that's the ones that the Pope likes the best anyway. So, I guess they won't like this video, will they? Anyway, so the world is, is just an upheaval over this. They're really moved by it that this is happening, but it has nothing to do with what's going on in Iraq, my friends. This is a prophecy yet to happen. Let, the, let some major nation like Russia, and believe me, Russia has a bone to pick with the Vatican. Because why? Pope John Paul II with Ronald Reagan caused the breakup of the Soviet Union. And now that this thing going on in Ukraine is happening and Russia is trying to protect its citizens and protect the interests that they have there, the Vatican is pushing the United States to threaten Russia and uh, they're, they're trying to get the... Uh, oh, um, did you notice the guy that's the, that, the, that they went in there by gunpoint and put into control there for the Ukraine? Isn't it interesting? Catholic boy as well. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? The Vatican wants that country. Well... Russia's tired of being pushed around by the Vatican. And eventually, their fuse is going to be a little bit too short and it's going to go off. And they're going to take and come down and they're going to destroy the Vatican. Now, this is why that you see the king of Babylon, his hands are feeble because he knows America has been dumb enough to weaken down its military you know, uh, capabilities. 
So America would have a hard time fighting against Russia. And what if Russia partners with China? This is why the Catholic Church is trying to get a stronghold in with China. They're trying to get everybody they can to join in with their alliance. But it's going to cave in on them, and very soon. So anyway, let's read on a little further here. As we go into chapter 51, it says, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in uh, Lagayama, and destroy a destroying wind. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? A destroying wind. Okay. And will send to Babylon winnowers, and they will shall winnow her, and she uh, shall empty her land. Let me read this in King James for you guys, because I know that sometimes when you read it in the in in the uh, Jewish Bible here, we tend to translate it a little differently than what you're used to, and I want you to really understand what what this actually means here. Let's go back here to the King James Version. And behold, uh, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. And will send into Babylon fanners, and they shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in, her, in the day of the trouble they shall be against her round about. And against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth himself up in his... Uh, brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, and destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts. Now that's important right there in verse 5. I want you to notice what he says here. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God or the Lord of hosts. Now, the Lord of hosts, actually in Hebrew, is the Lord of armies. Isn't that interesting? You, you remember the prophecy in Ezekiel where they say that, let me, let me read this to you, though, because that's really important that you understand this. Um, Ezekiel chapter 35, that's the prophecy where the Vatican is coming in to take Israel. Now, watch what he says here. Uh, around verse 12, So I will seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of the places where they have dispersed the cloudy and dark day, and I will bring them... Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter. Chapter 35, sorry about that. Verse 10, And you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, though the Lord was there. See, speaking of Israel. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will do according to thy anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. I will make myself known among them when I shall judge thee. When's God going to make himself known to Israel? When he judges this great whore called Esau, in this case here, or Edom. And when does he judge them? Well, according to the word of God, when they kill the two witnesses. So when the scripture says, because he tells you when, watch what he says. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, and they are given, to cons giving, given us to consume. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Notice what he says again. Back up. Let's read it again. They are la this is what they're saying. Okay, I have heard thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Now this is Rome saying this. And they also speak about the two nations up here in verse 10 and 11, that they're going to take them. That's because they created a state of Palestine as well as the state of Israel, and they're going to take them both. Now, according to... Uh, Jeremiah 51 here, he says, For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of, of, the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. See there? 
You come in there and you tried to take everything. You claimed you believed that it was forsaken, so you're going to come try to take it. See, all the prophecies speak it against the Vatican. We don't see the Iraqis over there, or the, yeah, the Iraqis are not over there. ISIS is not in Israel trying to take the land. You see, that, that's why it doesn't make sense to even suggest that ISIS has anything to do with the prophecies here in Jeremiah, or Ezekiel for that matter. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. What does it mean, flee out of her? Well, doesn't it say in Revelation, um, oh gosh, what is that? Is that chapter 10? Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. That's what he's meaning by flee out of her. And I forget the verse. Maybe you guys can help me with that by posting that in the comments. Um, so, uh, so we go on down, it says, uh, verse seven, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Wow. I bet you guys remember that one in the book of Revelation. She has that cup and, and she has made the kings of the earth drunken. See, with her delicacies, a golden cup, you know, they've taken their communion cup that they call it with their little mass and they have perverted this world with their ungodliness the nations have drunken of her wine therefore the nations are mad and you, do you realize what that you know they've gone crazy they, they can't see the word of God for this hour because they're too blind to recognize that the Vatican is controlling the whole world why you, you wouldn't you you know it's like <laughs> You know, you get a friend, they get you to come to the party, they get you drunk and everything. You know, if you do that kind of stuff, we don't do that. But if you were to do that, you know, they get you drunk and do all kinds of stupid stuff. Well, that's what the Vatican's done. They've gotten the whole world to drink. You know, they coerced them and they bought them and the people just, uh, you know what I mean. Verse 8, Babylon has suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain, if so, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she has not healed. Forsake her, and let, let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Isn't that beautiful? Now Zion's being lifted up. Make bright the arrows and gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Hmm. The vengeance of his temple. Isn't that interesting? Who's the one that is sitting there taking all God's heritage and land right now? The Vatican has managed to go in there and to manipulate and to take Mount Zion, the very a sacred site, the tomb of David, and hold a mass in there and desecrate it with their Babylonian pagan ways. Um, and so this is why God is, is, is in anger over all this, uh, the vengeance of his temple. So no telling. And we know according to uh, Daniel's prophecy that he's going to take and stop the, stop the sacrifice and oblation of the temple. So there will be a temple built and he's going to desecrate that as well. Set up uh, the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen and prepare the ambush, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness uh, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with uh, caterpillars and they shall lift up a shout against thee. Now we could go on, but let me first take you over to Revelation and just show you uh, again where this is written at. Chapter 18. Now you remember though from chapter 17 verse 5, and upon her forehead was written the name written, excuse me, was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She's a, it's Mystery Babylon. It's not the literal Babylon over in Iraq, brother, sister. So you have to understand. Now, I just read you right from Jeremiah's prophecy, everything that you're going to see right here in the book of Revelation. 
So this is nothing to do with Iraq. This is nothing to do with Babylon and Iraq, ancient Babylon. This is a mystery Babylon. And she is the mother of what? She is the mother of harlots, denominational systems. And the ones that you know that are the harlots are the ones that are coming back in, like Kenneth Copeland, like Joel Osteen, like uh, the head of the, uh, the Baptist Convention of the, uh, the United States there. They had all, look at those videos where I put them out and show you all the heads of different denominational religions. And this has nothing to do with the people that are good godly Christians in these systems. You know, this is the leaders of your systems are going back to their mother. In fact, Billy Graham even speaks about it like that, says, you know, going back to the mother church. Well, she's the mother of harlots and abominations, see, uh, of the earth. Well, the abomination is the Muslim religion. All these other religions that have been, that have been birthed by the Vatican for whatever purpose she intended them to do with. So it's important that we see that there. But let's go to Revelation 18. The reason I come here is because Jeremiah's prophecy is judgment against her. And, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every fowl and spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is, this is why you saw when Pope Francis uh, had the two little children there and they released the two little doves and then you saw the, the raven and the seagull come in there and attack and just beat these two doves nearly to death. See, those are unclean and hateful birds. Both the raven and the seagull are considered classified as unclean and hateful birds. So God was giving you a sign right there of what was happening then. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Did not Jeremiah mention here about that cup that she had? And did he not say, you know, let's, let's go back and look at it. Let's just, I want to make sure you keep these thoughts right before you so that we don't, we don't lose the momentum of what we're speaking about here. Uh, I think it's very important for you to, to see this and to understand this. Uh, so let's just quickly... Um, um, gosh, I get kind of mixed up with these Bibles here. Hang on, I'm sitting here using two different ones at the same time. Um, but I want you to see this specifically because... It's exactly what we have going on here. Jeremiah chapter 50 again, or 51, I believe, is where we were at here. Uh, Mr. Babylon, okay, see, in verse 7, chapter 51, verse 7, Jeremiah, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. What does it say here? For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. See, there's another scripture over here uh, that speaks about her treasures. Uh, that when we were reading this, let me just see if I can find that again. Um, let's see. Forsake the country of judgment. Okay. Um, Mm, I forget where it's at, but there was another one here that we, we were reading that, and I'm sure you guys can go back and see what that is, where it spoke about how that she has all these treasures um, that, are, that are in her there. Um, so at any rate there, let me just, let me just quickly here. Um, it's a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Okay. Yes, it's in verse 13. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasure, thy end is come, and the measure of thy greed. And the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men and with locusts, and they shall raise about against thee. See? So there it is again. We see the, in Revelation the same thing. See? For this... Uh, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Okay, this is 18.4 has come out of her, my people. But let me go back, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Didn't we read the same thing over here? Um... 
Uh, I forget exactly where that's at. Let me find it. Okay, that's right. I think this is the one. Uh, we would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one to his own country, for her judgment reaches to heaven and is lifted up to the sky. See, it's a calling out right there. Uh, forsake her and let us everyone go to his own country. Get away from her. Uh, I believe it was a different one, though, than that. I think there was one that was a little bit more straightforward. Anyway, I, I'm just, I just put this together quickly for you because I wanted to share this with you. Uh, reward, uh, uh, let's see, verse 5, for her sins have reached into heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even she rewarded you and double her at double according to the works and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of the torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour judgment cometh, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Now see, it's just uh, it's very similar. Now they're weeping and mourning, and what we have here in uh, over here in uh, chapter fifty and verse uh, right around verse what was it forty six. Uh, they're, they're in an upheaval and there's an outcry about what's happening here. So uh, very similar in indeed the way it's happened. The merchandise of the gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and linen and purple and silk and scarlet and vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors. It's, it names all these things and they're no longer going to be in thee. I mean, guys, hello. Is anybody really taking inventory where you can find all these things in one place? You'll find it in Vatican City. Everything you see mentioned here, you'll find in Vatican City. You're not going to find that in ancient Babylon. I hate to tell you, there's not much of anything there anymore. But it is mystery Babylon is where this is at. I hope this helps you some. I know that there's going to be a lot of excitement. There's going to be a lot of teachers that are going to be saying that that ISIS, oh, we're going, to have, we're going to have all kinds of prophecies, dreams, visions, and everything else I can only imagine uh, of what this is going to be. I don't say that there's not going to be some, some, there's some part of the puzzle that this plays, but when it comes to Babylon in Iraq, raising up as a world power and the Antichrist being seated there in that city, no. You, you, you're totally being distracted by Satan to look at something else. See, Satan doesn't want you to know where he really is because that's how he's going to get people to worship him. As long as we keep looking for an antichrist or whatever you want to say to be in the Muslim people, you will end up falling for this lie and this deception and you'll end up, if you're not careful, I know you guys know better, but... If, let's put it this way here. The Bible says you can't buy or sell save and you take this mark that's coming up. You know, I can't tell you what that mark is. I have no idea, but I know one thing. It's going to be affected in commerce. And one thing's for sure, the Vatican is calling the shots and they will call the shots and they will get more dominance still yet. But God's going to judge her for that. Anyway, God bless you. God bless you and have a great night. Shalom.